Hey race fans, I'm Robbie, and this is The Race Report. Hey everyone, I want to welcome you to uh, The Race Report. Uh, this is a program I'm going to try to do after each race. Um, I used to do something like this uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, a lot of people said that they enjoyed uh, listening to some uh, feedback on the races, and so... Uh, Thought maybe I'd give it a try again. We'll see how time goes. Um, sometimes it's hard to get all the videos in and uh, still be able to do this. But I'm hoping to be able to do this each month. And it um, should be pretty fun. So I want to welcome you to the first episode of the Race Report 2020. Uh, we got our races started off this month, um, January. Uh, pretty fun. A uh, few new guys racing with us. Some of the old guys racing with us. Um, it's a lot of, a lot of fun. And we had a lot of good racing. Um, so, what's new? What's new in 2020? Well, um, we have a couple of new classes. We have our hot off the shelf class, which is uh, kind of an old class. We, we did this a couple of years ago. Um, it was a little different back then. Um, back then it was a uh, rip and race. So you sent in stuff um, that you hadn't tested yet. Uh, hot off the shelf means stuff that you can find on the shelves right now. And uh, we're... we're racing this this year's cars uh, last year's cars and then towards the end of the year we'll start seeing some of next year's cars on the shelf so um, we can also race those so that's kind of the idea um, we've kind of changed hot off the shelf and so now uh, it's more like a stock uh, a regular stock class um, you can open them up you can test them um, and, and like all our classes you can use graphite as well so um, that's kind of that's kind of a fun new class. I think it'll be um, lots of fun. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about it later in the show, um, but it's a good one. And then um, we also have another new class uh, this year is our modified street class. And so uh, this one is where uh, it's very similar to our open modified class as far as weight and um, specifications like that go. But these cars have to be um, stuff you might see on the street. They have to look like a car. Uh, production cars and so uh, that's a fun class that we just started um, so a lot a lot of fun this year I think we're gonna have um, two new classes still got the old ones open modified open stock and then our feature race as well so we're racing five classes uh, this year that ups the the workload on me a little bit but I think it's gonna turn out really good it's gonna be a lot of fun so Hey, so um, this year I feel like the track is running re really well. I, uh, I, in the off season, of course, we take uh, December off, enjoy the holidays, and, and take a little break from racing. November is usually our last month uh, in the season, and so uh, during that off time, I like to take a look at the track and see if I can make any tweaks or things. Um, I still have a few cosmetic things I want to do to the track. Uh, but as far as performance wise, I think it's really running good. I, I actually tried a little something over the break. Um, so I don't know, uh, my track is continuous track. Uh, it's one long piece all the way down, so there's no seams, which is, is totally awesome. But if any of you have dealt with this continuous track, uh, one of the drawbacks is it, it, it came packaged in a, it curled up, and that track just wants to curl up. And so getting it to lay flat can be a challenge. And uh, eventually what I did was I bought Velcro. Um, and I Velcroed the whole bottom of the track, and I have a line of Velcro on um, the, the boards, the support of the track, and I stick those together, and it lays out nice and smooth. But um, one of the interesting things on the track is that um, I kind of felt like, or I wondered, if the track was a little bit tippy, because I have that line of Velcro right in the middle, and so uh, the track doesn't sit exactly flat down on the wood. And I thought, ah, that may be um, affecting the cars a little bit, so... Uh, what I did in the off season is uh, I spent a whole bunch of time and I cut uh, thin little strips of cardboard um, that could sit on either side of the Velcro down on the track and then I, I set the, the track on that and, and, then, and then I found that the track was actually resting uh, pretty solidly then. Um, the orange track was fitting pretty, pretty solidly down onto the wood or actually onto the little pieces of cardboard that were on the wood. and um, I felt like it was... It was definitely more stable uh, this way, um, but I, I actually I ran the cars on it a few times, did a few test runs, tried out some stuff, and uh, I felt like the cars uh, 
it, it just didn't work. Um, and uh, I actually learned something uh, here, and I'm going to share that with you guys. Um, the Velcro actually gives a little bit of cushioning, and, and that track sitting up off the wood a little bit, um, and, the, and the cars run way better. I found when I was running the cars um, down this, this new version of the track, uh, they, it was much louder, um, and the cars would, uh, would get out of control. I had cars bouncing off the track that I've never seen happen before on, on this big track. And so, and I've seen this on other, you know, I've got a few other tracks that I, I take around to different places and I have my wood base and most of the time I use segmented track for that. Um, and uh, cars are jumping off the track all the time. And I, I kind of chalked it up to the, the segmented stuff, but I think, um, especially when you're just dealing with regular mainline off the shelf type cars, um, those things are bouncing and jumping all over the place. And I, I've seen it on other tracks, um, videos and things. And uh, I think that um, having that track cushion just a little bit uh, makes those cars run a lot smoother, keeps them on the track. They don't, they don't have that such hard surface to bounce around on. So uh, for me, I've, I like to say, I've learned something. I, I took the cardboard back off and we're running back like we were last year. And I think the cars are really running great. Um, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna look at, into cushioning some of my other tracks as, as I continue to build and, and have some of my other tracks that I take around to places. And um, you might look into that. Um, I'm gonna use, uh, I've used a lot of little different kinds of foam um, for packaging and things like that. And I might look into something like that, uh, just running a strip underneath the track, the orange track when I um, do some of my other tracks. So anyways, I'm pretty happy with the, the track and the way that it's running right now. Um, so I didn't, I didn't do a lot of modifications over the, over the off season uh, to the track. Like I said, I still have some plans for some cosmetic things, but otherwise I think the track is running great. So uh, we, had, we had some great racing this month and uh, I think we should get to it. Let's, let's talk about some of these cars. All right, so the first class we wanna talk about is the stock class. Uh, we had some really good racing this month in the stock class. A little bit of a, a variety. Uh, a little more so than in some um, previous years, previous races. A um, few of our regulars weren't uh, weren't back this January, so uh, we got to see a lot of different stuff. Um, it came down to these four cars. We had two Fairmonts, um, a Matchbox Camaro, and then this stock car um, from ND Racing. We had uh, two 9.81 racing uh, cars in the mix and then G-Force Racing had his Fairmont. So 9.8 run racing is actually me um, and then uh, G-Force is my son. So we do have a couple of fast Fairmonts in the family. <laughs> um, we kind of duked it out there in the finals. Uh, glad to say dad came out on top but um, it was it was fun and uh, we do have like I say a couple of fast Fairmonts. Um, we've seen the Fairmonts do really well in our stock class. However, um, I do want to kind of talk about those and point out a little bit that um, while they do have absolute super speed potential, uh, not every Fairmont is fast. In fact, uh, we've we've collected quite a few on our way to finding a couple of fast ones. So these are the guys that didn't make the cut as well as a few others that uh, we've used and cut up and played around with and uh, done some other things, experimented on a little bit and modded a few. And so um, uh, needless to say, it's not um, it's not a guarantee that you get a Fairmont and it's going to be fast, but definitely they have super fast potential, um, and we've seen that here in our stock class before. Um, so uh, just the, the, these gold hot ones in general, um, they they have great speed potential, but they can be super fickle on the track. Um, they if they just hit any kind of inconsistency or bounce off the side or just um, anything. Uh, they can get really shaky, wobbly, um, sometimes even flat the track. It's um, it's hard to get them to run consistently. So uh, just uh, when you're hunting cars and, and looking for speed, um, the hot ones are, are a great look at. But again, you got to have one that's pretty perfect. Like I say, if, if the wheels aren't like perfectly round or um, the axles are just off just a little bit, those things get just super wobbly and um, can can it really slows them down so it's kind of like a um, all or nothing it seems like with the with those hot ones they're either super fast or they're uh, super scary when they go down the track we don't want to be in one but um, stock was a lot of fun this month and uh, I'm looking forward to uh, seeing 
uh, some great stock races in the future. Um, one of the new uh, rules that we have this this year is um, the the winner each month in uh, each of our classes, except for the feature race, uh, which is different every month. Um, but all of our um, other classes, uh, the winning car of each month um, will stay here at D64. Uh, we'll store them safely up on, um, in a case, up on the shelf. And then um, at the end of the year, they will all race um, for the car of the year, you know, whichever one. So uh, one cool thing about that is, uh, even though this guy um, won this month, you're not going to see him next month or the month after that or the month after that. So uh, we're going to hopefully uh, get a little more variety in, uh, in the cars that are winning and the points. Um, that's going to change um, the, the class standings. Um, if you got a car that's winning every month, of course, you're going to stay right at the standings. But in this case, uh, a car that wins uh, will, will be out for the rest of the year. And uh, at that point, then, we're going to see uh, hopefully a new champion the next month. And uh, if it's that same, same team, then they can stay at the top of the standings. But uh, they're going to have to find something else with some speed. And, and you'll continually have to... To stay at the top, you're going to have to keep finding speed. And so that's going to make things interesting, I think. Going to make things a lot of fun and uh, add a little variety to uh, to who's winning. So uh, these three may be back. Who knows? Uh, but the winner, uh, he'll be sitting the rest of the year out. And uh, we'll see what uh, 9.81 can come up with uh, as far as speed goes. All right, this month in our Hot Off the Shelf, again, kind of a new race. So I think everybody's kind of testing cars out and trying to find uh, something that's going to work for them. Uh, it seemed like, uh, as I uh, were, was opening packages and getting things sorted, um, uh, this, this seemed like it was an Evo race versus Jaguar race. Um, it seems like in a lot of testing that everybody's done, uh, they thought they had found kind of a casting that, that seemed to be fast. Um, in the uh, battle between the Evos and the Jaguars, it turns out that uh, the Jaguars came out on top. Um, most of them placed a little bit better than the Evos. And uh, in our uh, top four, we ended up with one of the Jaguars. We got uh, this new Roger Dodger uh, 2.0. And then a couple of uh, GoPro zoom-in cars. Um, so it was, it was kind of fun to see the variety a little bit. But in, in also, uh, a lot of the same types of cars showed up, um, which turned out to be... Uh, a pretty good the Jaguars were a pretty good pick the uh, Evo not so much um, was really impressed with the the Roger Dodger 2.0 um, I tested quite a few of these cars and uh, found that um, not everyone is a speedster for sure uh, but it definitely has some good potential and uh, really it came down it came down to these two cars um, they battled it out for the top spot and uh, Voxer Racing came out with uh, the win with this Jaguar so that's pretty cool. It'll be interesting to see what we uh, what we see next month. If we'll see a few more of these back, if we'll find some other stuff. Uh, the thing that I'm I'm really excited about this is that we're early in the year, and there's going to be a lot of a lot of new cars coming out, a lot of new castings coming out, and hopefully we'll uh, we'll see a little bit of variety. Um, again, this is this is a really fun race. I, uh, I I'm excited about the hot off the shelf because it gives me uh, as, as a racer and uh, a little bit of a collector. Um, reason to go out and, and buy some of these new cars. Um, generally, if I'm just racing in like open stock and sending cars off to, to other races, a lot of the new stuff is it's just not fast. It's just not um, as fast as the old stuff, the, the heavier castings from uh, 80s and 90s. Um, the stuff just doesn't, doesn't compete as well. Um, and so I, I love this because it gives me a reason to go out and uh, head over to Walmart and look through the cars because I, that's that's the cars that are racing is those cars that are on the shelf right now and so i get to buy buy some cars come home and race them and test them and i look for some speed there and it gives me purpose um in in continuing to collect uh these days and, and continuing to buy cars so hopefully you'll have fun with us in hot off the shelf if you haven't raced this class uh get over to walmart go to target wherever your favorite uh stomping ground is to to hunt for cars and uh, get a few off the shelf, pull them down, un unpack them, put them on the track. See if they're fast. If they're fast, send them in. Um, it it's just for fun and uh, 
super easy. Anybody can get into this class. Uh, this is, I, I, I wanted a class that was easy to get into racing with. And uh, this is the one, right? Uh, you don't have to have an extensive collection. You don't have to have flea markets and um, vintage shops to go to to try to find old cars. Uh, you can just go, you're, everybody's on, on level ground. Um, everybody's buying the same cars and uh, you're just looking for speed. Find something fast and send it in. Um, it's a lot of fun. All right, so it's time for It's a Draw. We're going to do a little drawing here. Uh, on the race report show uh, this month going to be giving away this five pack uh, got a couple of faster than ever's here uh, a few other cars got a governor it's always a great one to modify in fact uh, on redline derby uh, racing we've got uh, a little governor race coming up uh, in a few months so uh, and then we've got uh, got a little regular treasure hunt bugatti and uh, jaguar Again, we saw a few of these this month, right? Maybe that'll be a fast one for hot off the shelf. Never know. So, anyways, without further ado, we got everybody's name here. Let's see who we pull out. We got Rivera Racing. So, uh, hey, Rivera Racing, be looking for a few extra cars in your package when I send those home to you. The next class we're going to talk about is the modified class. Um, in this class, it's called Open Modified for a reason. Uh, it's open to anything that you can come up with. We do have a few specifications, uh, like a weight limit and a length limit, um, but otherwise, it's, it's kind of open to everything. Uh, so you'll see cars uh, that look like regular cars, and you'll see some stuff um, that doesn't look like regular cars. <laughs> and that's cool. Um, open Modified is, I kind of look at Open Modified as like a testing ground. Uh, try out your stuff. Um, try new things. Uh, play around with aerodynamics. Play around with uh, different polishing techniques. Um, play around. Try things out. See if they're fast. And then, um, then you can apply that to some of your other modified cars. And so um, it's a good class just to play around with, uh, to get involved in modding a little bit, and uh, see what happens. Anyways, um, this month, these are our finalists here. Uh, four finalists. We had uh, 9.81 Racing, Boxer Racing, and then a couple from GeForce. And uh, really, uh, uh, it came down to um, 9.81 Racing, edged out Boxer Racing for the win here. Um, as, as we mentioned earlier, uh, the uh, winner of each month is going to be set aside for uh, the Car of the Year race. So this will be set aside up on a shelf for the uh, Modified Car of the Year race. So we won't be seeing him again. And uh, these guys probably show up maybe again, who knows. Um, but... Hopefully, again, having that car of the year race and setting those aside and uh, setting the winners out uh, will keep things interesting, keep people building, uh, building new things, trying new things, and uh, hopefully we'll see a lot of uh, new fun stuff again next month. Ah, Modified Street. This was a fun one. Uh, this is a new class this year, as I mentioned. Um, it's pretty cool. Uh, where open modified, um, anything goes. This is a class where they need to look like cars or trucks in this case. This seemed to be the race of the trucks. So you can see the, uh, three of our four finalists turned out to be trucks, which is pretty fun. Um, I love this class. Again, um, it's stuff that you'd see on the street, right? Um, so uh, any weight that's, that's added to the cars needs to look like uh, it's been there. So it, as far as trucks go, you can put stuff in the back because trucks haul stuff around in the back, right? Uh, but otherwise, no uh, crazy weight stuck on the top, no um, crazy shapes. We decided to um, outlaw fantasy castings, um, while some of them are super cool. Um, we just wanted stuff that looked like cars. So um, the way we uh, stated the rule was production cars. Um, thinking about, um, I hadn't really, uh, a couple of people have asked a little bit about um, maybe uh, tweaking that just a little bit. Um, and they asked about concept cars. And so uh, I think I'm going to be okay with that, even though they maybe weren't mass produced or whatever. Most concept cars, there's at least one model, right, that was produced. And so um, if it has a manufacturer's name, right, uh, Cadillac Concept or Mitsubishi Concept, um, if it's got a, a manufacturer's name in front of it, I think we're still okay. Um, but these these need to look like cars, right? And uh, this is um, this is, I love I'm, I'm super excited about this class. Anyways, um, as I mentioned, we had a couple of F-150s, um, another truck, cars, everything. 
Uh, we got to see lots of fun uh, variety in this class. Uh, it did come down to uh, 9.81s racing and uh, Voxer racing, uh, battling it out. Um, this actually ended in a super close race. Um, 9.81 just barely edged out Voxer racing for the win there. Um, again, this guy be set aside for uh, the end of the year. And uh, who knows, we might see these guys back again. But uh, this is, uh, I'm, again, I'm just super excited about the class. I hope, uh, I hope everybody will get involved in this um, and uh, send in some cars. Um, this one, again, you don't, have to, you don't have to do tons of modifications if, um, if you're just getting started. Because, uh, again, you got to keep all the weight inside. You can't make it uh, any, any crazy aerodynamic chop off the top or whatever. It's just, it's got to be a car, right? So um, this makes it a little bit easier for uh, some of those getting started to, to get into modding. And so I hope you'll join us in this class for sure. Hey, so uh, this is a short little segment I wanted to do. Um, I, I thought it'd be fun to feature one of the modified cars that we get, um, take a closer look, right? So um, this month, we're gonna look at uh, Voxer Racing's feature race car. This thing is, uh, whew, it's like glass. So I wanna bring you in close and uh, take a look at this thing. Um, so as you can see, he has smoothed out the body and uh, put a super glossy, uh, almost wet looking paint job on this thing. It is just great. Um, I don't know if you can guess what uh, what car, kind of car that is. It's a governor actually. Um, like I say, he's completely smoothed out all the lines on it and uh, just a thing of beauty uh, for real. So anyways, I thought it'd be fun to, to take a closer look and uh, let you see that one. So Voxer Racing. Uh, featured modified car this month. Our next race, uh, the feature race uh, this month, was the lightweight downhill dash. This is a fun one. We've run it the last couple of years, and uh, I really like it because uh, it features all the other techniques that you might use to make cars fast besides weight, right? These cars are light. Have to come in at 37 grams or under, and so, see, we got... A little bit of a variety in this class, a little bit of everything. Um, and uh, again, it's not about weight. Uh, 37 grams, pretty light. Um, you might find, I mean, some of our newer cars, uh, mainline cars are, are pretty light. So you may find adding, you might, you're adding a little bit of weight, but in some places, uh, some of those older cars that you might be playing with, uh, you're actually trying to take some weight off. And uh, again, it comes down to polishing axles, sand and wheels, whatever those things that you do to make the car fast. And uh, in, in this class, it turned out uh, Voxer Racing um, cruised to a pretty easy victory, um, in fact. And uh, this is a pretty sweet car. And uh, I don't, Voxer Racing's been racing uh, here at Diecast 64 for a little while, and we all know that he is fast. And uh, this one, again, really showcased uh, some of his work. Uh, he uh, pays cl particularly close attention to detail and, and all those little details um, added up to make uh, a really fast car. Um, and uh, again, uh, without, without the weight, um, it's, it's all those little things. So um, congratulations to Voxer Racing. Uh, this guy uh, will be going back home. Um, in the feature race, we, we don't have a, a feature race car of the year. Uh, race at the end of the year. Um, it wouldn't really make sense as our feature race has all kinds of different weights, styles, classes, and uh, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't be worth racing all those different cars at the end of the year because uh, probably all our heavyweight downhill dashers would, would definitely uh, take that one because of, of the extra weight that they're allowed. So uh, anyways, um, it was a great race, lots of fun. I love this race and again, um, fun, fun way to showcase uh, some modifying skills. Hey, what's that? Ah, I know what that means. That means it's time to look at the uh, class standings for the year so far. So as we take a look at these class standings, just remember that uh, it is early in the year. Um, a lot of these can change. Um, as you're looking through there, you might see some gaps in points, right? I see a 10, a 9, an 8, and then maybe down to a 4. Um, remember when we uh, count points for the class, Everybody can, um, most of our classes, you can enter two cars uh, from the same team. Um, however, it'll only be your top team that scores points. And so if you have a car that comes in first place and gets 10 points, 
and then maybe a different team that comes in uh, second place and gets nine points. And then um, if it's that same, if the third place car is from the same team as the first place car, then um, they don't score any points for that as far as the standings go. Uh, but nobody gets the eight points, right? And then the next car maybe gets the seven points. And then if you have a couple of repeats, then you might have um, no points there. So it really pays to put in two cars and it actually... Um, can benefit you to have cars scoring in the top 10, two cars scoring in the top 10, because it can, um, it just means that somebody else won't get those points and it might push uh, the next people's points down lower. So you can't score more than, um, more points than just for one car, uh, but you can take up scores from the other one. So definitely pays to have a couple of cars in, in the race and uh, try, to, try to eat up some of those points so that other, others don't get them, so. Each month at Diecast 64, we give a Racer of the Month award. And uh, what this award is, is uh, given to the racer that scores the most points across all the classes. Uh, so we add up all the points that they would have they, they scored in all the classes. And uh, whoever comes out on top is our Racer of the Month for that month. Um, in, uh, normally in the class standings, we do not count the points for uh, a second car that the racer might race. Um, but in the uh, Racer of the Month, we do count um, points for uh, both cars. So if somebody gets a first place car and a uh, third place car, uh, they're gonna get 10 points for the first place car and eight points for the third place car. They'll score 18 points for that class. I um, feel like uh, when it comes to the racer of the month, uh, if they're consistent across all the classes and uh, if they're getting that second car up in there and scoring points, um, that just adds to, um, to the, the value of that racer. And so, Feel like they deserve that um, those extra points for that second car so um, hopefully uh, this will be something that'll be fun to shoot for on a monthly basis um, yeah, different maybe from again uh, the full season for the class points so um, without further ado I'm gonna let you look at um, the standings for race of the month and uh, how the points shook up this month So there you go. Um, congratulations to 9.81 Racing, and uh, hopefully uh, we'll see you guys up there on top next month. All right, so we've got uh, some great racing coming up in February. Uh, February's uh, feature race is super fun. Um, it's our uh, Dukes of Hazard Jump Track, the uh, Hazard County Dragonfly. I <laughs> get it, Dragonfly, Drag and Fly. It's got a um, uh, a jump. Uh, the cars race down uh, two lanes, up off a ramp, fly uh, over about a two foot gap, and then land on um, black fat track uh, to race to the end. So um, cool, super cool jump, some jostling and passing at the end. Um, super unique track. It's been a lot of fun in the past and uh, should continue to, to provide some enjoyment the next month as well. So you don't want to miss out on that. Um, generally, uh, cars that are fast do well, um, but there is that uh, little element of luck and uh, with, with the fat track and the jump and uh, lots of good racing. This turns out to just be um, fun, fun racing. So definitely get involved. Uh, send in some cars. We'll be running all uh, four other classes as well. We'll have open stock, open modified, modified street, and our hot off the shelf class. And then of course, um, the feature race will be the, the Deuce of Hazard jump track. So um, wanna see you here on the track next month. Um, it's, it's gonna be lots of fun. Uh, get, get some cars sent in, uh, get involved in some of the races. Even if you don't race in all the classes, again, I'm just trying to provide an opportunity for you to race. You don't have to race in all the classes. You don't even have to race every month, but I just wanted something consistent so that you'd have a place to race whenever you wanted to. Uh, if you ended up getting a fast car, um, send it in, see how it does. Um, it, it's fun, it's just fun to race. Um, hope to see you again uh, on the track. Uh, go check out the website, www.racehotwheels.com 
and get all the information, where to send cars, how to do it. We've got some videos on uh, effective ways to pack cars and uh, effective ways, efficient ways and the cheapest ways to ship cars and uh, just tons of information, articles on how to modify cars. So go check out the website and then uh, let's get some cars sent in. I want to see you on the track. Well, that's our show for today. Um, hope you had some fun here with me. I had fun talking about some of the cars and races and uh, hope to see you next month. See you in lane two.